I gave a presentation here at, at um, the metaphysical bookstore here in Venice. And the topic was, where I am the third Sunday of every month, and the topic was uh, spiritual awakening. So some of those ideas uh, is what's going to be shared today. Spiritual awakening seems to be a giving up something. Consciousness, God, Creator, does not want to take from us the little that we have. How can you give up what never existed? Are you giving up the belief in lack? God does not know lack. God does not even know any tension. You were given up the ego, the false self, the imposter. And that self, being nothing, has absolutely nothing to offer. And from nothing comes nothing. So belief in lack and limitation is belief in illusion. Deception. And our beliefs imprison us. You are giving up what you thought was valuable and exchanging it for what is valuable. Lesson 133. I will not value what is valueless. When valueless ideas ceases to have value in my restless mind, then I will know the truth. We must be willing to awaken from the dream. And as I've often said, the Buddha was asked, are you an angel? No. Are you God? No. What are you then? The Buddha smiled, replied, I am awake. So let us not talk about the Buddha. Be the Buddha. Be the awakened one. Buddha means the awakened one. And of course, in miracles, teaches us the awakened mind knows its self, its source, and its wholeness. So are we willing to exchange what we've made, a pitiful illusion, and awaken to the light, awaken to the essence that is your true self? And the goal of life is to wake up, awaken my children. And remember. So you're having a personal transformation through the awakening of inner wisdom and understanding. And this wisdom, which is the knowledge of God, is already there within each of us. And you're standing under the canopy of love, light, and wisdom. Love, which is our essence, and the only thing that's real, can only be awakened by love. And you cannot wake yourself. Activation is within the heart of love. We are beings of light prisms of light, reflected mirror consciousness in this mundane third dimension, man-made world of ideas. You are light awakening in a physical manifestation. So we are here to, to, to heal the distortion in the mind. So you can, you can head into a new reality which will be superimposed upon the old. So the structure that you have developed, which is our...
nice, delusional belief <laughs> has to collapse in order for a new structure to be built. And this new structure is already built. Your part is simply to accept what belongs to you, your divine inheritance. So are we willing, as the Course teaches us, to lay down your cruel sword of judgment you hold against your throat? Lay down your shield, take off your armor, and come without defenses. Your defenses are what prevents you from moving closer to others. Can we simply accept and recognize the truth of what we are? You are the breath of God. And you are breathing the breath of God. You are liberating yourself from false belief and allowing your true essence, the light, to strengthen you. And your light body is your blueprint. And it dwells deep in a higher world. Are we willing to let go and allow yourself to be healed completely? Completeness lacks in nothing. Are we willing to, 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 to lay aside your cumbersome defenses which profit nothing? Your true self knows where you belong. You belong. You belong to the family of light. So through our willingness, as the Course teaches us, come with an open heart, open mind, and empty hands. Willingness to learn something entirely different. Willingness to practice seeing differently. To practice seeing in the light. So we have to have a sense of being as a child and trusting. And as, as we begin to recognize what is real within us, to so recognize in your essence, the mind has only light. It knows only light. And you came in to represent the light. You, you came in to represent what you are. You are a bringer of the light. So you are claiming your divine inheritance as the light of the world. You are awakening to the recognition, to recognize this to know, of what is real. The chains of conditioning that have kept you trapped in a world, in a, a, an illusionary world, a man-made world of, of ideas, light awakening in a physical manifestation. So you can head into a new reality. And we have to be gentle and compassionate with ourselves because it's the process. It's not something that happens overnight or in a day or two. It's the process of opening, trusting, and surrendering. You, 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 you're sensing your release in the light, and you are escaping from what you've made, escaping from your sorry consequences. So we ask the question, do you want to be free? The answer is yes. Then do not hold yourself hostage. 
there is an intelligence operating for good in your life. And just as a bucket is filled drop by drop, you can transform your thought one thought at a time. And all we're asked to do is simply to let the light in. You're letting go of historical time concepts. And you're opening your mind to your immaculate concept. And again, I call it the four Ps. It's patience, practice, preparation, and process. You're going through a process of change. It's another cycle in your development. So it's a clearing of all dense energies and raising your vibration, opening to what is already there within you, your immaculate concept, opening to holy unity. And Mother Earth moves in order to cleanse. And this is why we are experiencing a cleansing, a purging, a clearing from your system. And again, it is a process of pain, followed by great joy. And pain is the manifestation in the body of the sickness in the mind, and you are willing to be healed completely. So you're raising your vibration, thoughts of vibration, from fear to love, an awakening up from within. It's, it, it's, it's a, we call it a, a quantum leap. A quantum leap means to arrive suddenly at a destination without having traveled a path to get there. We're already there. The essence of what you are and here to do is already within you, just waiting to be discovered, to be accepted by you. So you're crossing the bridge from, from, from fear to love, from fragmented consciousness to total consciousness because you want what is on the other side. So it's a sort of a, 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 a mystical marriage that takes place where the bridegroom is claiming the bride. Spirit and matter are becoming one in a whole, holy, complete relationship. So you're raising your frequency Frequency means a vibrational state that emanates a particular level of understanding. So you are awakening to your true identity, your natural power of light. So it's your, it's your coming home to the awareness and understanding of what is real. Spirit. Light. Spirit is the source. There's only one original source. Spirit is the source of that which is never born. Light. Never born and never dies. So when we, when we awaken from the dream, when you enter into, into the uh, awareness of spirit, you realize, you recognize that all is one. You woke up from the dream, you woke up from, from, from the dream state, your third dimensional nest, and realize that everything, everything arises from and returns to the same source. What is the same cannot be different. What is one cannot have separate parts. I am you and you are me. In content, only the form is different. You come to the recognition, 
you realize we are prisms of light, beams of light, transparent light, your, your, your light body, rays of light, reflecting mirror consciousness in this human man-made world of form that is forever changing. And you are the breath of life. You are breathing the breath of God. Why? Because you are. You're breathing in the prana. Prana is the breath of God, the breath of life. And there is only one life. And that we share with all of creation. And you are creation, creating in a world of forever, that is a forever changing form. You are breathing the breath of God because you are. So, so you're, you're stimulating your desires to, to participate, participate in life. You weren't participating in life when you're seeing yourself uh, uh, lacking and limited, seeing yourself less than you truly are. And now you're seeing, you're seeing, you're beginning to see the image, image is thought in which you were created. And you're identifying with that image. You're no longer identifying with the image that you have made. And, and you're awakening to your hidden potential. Essence of what you are has always been there, but it was covered up by your own self-made ideas. And now you're accepting what is real. Why? Because it's what you do want. Freedom. Freedom from illusion. So you're, ex you're, you're accepting what is not of this world. How do the wise awaken? They see deception as deception. So through all the pain and sorrow, suffering, sacrifice, disillusion, despondent, depressed, deprived, alone, uh, feeling lonely, afraid, tired, exhausted, do not want to come home because you have exhausted your energy, <laughs> your God-given energy on idle pursuits, meaningless endeavors, and you, you are now allowing your limitations to melt away so you can remember what you are what is already there, stored in your memory, why you're here, and what you're here to do. So you're liberating yourself from the clutches of a delusional thought system that you have organized and developed, beliefs that have kept you trapped and in a prison, locked and without a key and you're tired and fatigued, you're releasing meaningless activities. You, you, you're blessed all of your experiences that brought you to where you are now. So you can begin to taste the nectar of immortality. So you can begin to taste the joy of simple living by letting go of things that are non-essential. You're stepping out from the momentum of the mind and all. The key is do not fail yourself. Do not look back. It retards your progress. As I've said on, on the radio before, once I made the decision, there was no looking back. Just 
moving, moving, moving forward, growing, expanding, remembering, trusting, and allowing. You want to see differently. Now your sight is being restored, and you're beginning to see differently. You're, 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 you're becoming awake, aware, and alive. And aliveness simply is God is. You say God is, and then you cease to speak. God is. God is an energy field of pure, not contaminated, not corrupted, pure, unconditional love. So we, it's the responsibility of each and every one of us to undo so we can remember. And God being life is not asking us to do the impossible. The undoing is not your task. All you're being asked to do is to let the light in. Do not interfere. Lay down your cruel sword of judgment you hold against your throat. Release the thing that prop you up. You are awakening to the truth of what you are. And choosing to celebrate your life. And the goal of life is to wake up. And once awake, for heaven's sake, stay awake. Again, the awakened mind knows its self, its source, and its wholeness. You cannot be anywhere but where you belong. You belong to the family of light. Your true essence is unchangeable, unchanging, changeless, eternal, immortal, forever and forever. We share one life because there is only one soul. So we have to be a little, a little a little willingness is all that's asked of us. Just be willing to let go of what you have made, of what has provided you with a limited amount of comfort. Be willing to change. You are making an exchange. You're opening your mind to light correction. You do not want what you have made. You're opening your mind to receive what is rightfully yours. So let the old foundation collapse. Let it break down. Remain open to holy newness. Be, be open to embrace the changes and not allow fear to intimidate you. Look within. Become quiet and allow the voice of your soul to wake you out of your slumber, out of your third dimensional death. Do not be wrapped up in your illusion. It's the illusion of despair, suffering, sacrifice, lack, limitation, littleness, none of which is real. Your soul knows where you belong, and your soul is nudging you into creative action. Trust and follow. When we feel pressure to change, it's the source of life, your soul pushing you to, to listen. And listening is sacred. It's a divine gift, which few have developed. Pushing you to change. Just remain open to a mystical revelation.
vibration of what is real. As you allow, you're allowing, not trying to make anything happen, because it's already done. You're just now becoming aware. You're allowing your life to evolve into, into a more grand and glorious light. And nothing, nothing is being lost or taken away. Any feelings of, 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 of sorrow or leaving something is all part of the process of releasing. And the, ti and the time has come. <laughs> the time has come. And the moment is now for us to wake up and remember what has been stored in your memory. We have to understand that the nature of human experience is to change. And change is the nature of this universe. And ask yourself, what has sorrow brought you but sorrow? What has joy brought you but joy? And joy is your birthright. And it is repetition that has got you to where you are, and it's repetition that can carry you where you want to be. Repetition, easy, often. Many of us must reach through words because many of us are unable to hear in silence. You're asking for what already belongs to you. It's your divine inheritance. If we are not, if we're not expressing beauty, health, harmony, prosperity, wealth, abundance, which are our spiritual birthright. It's because you're not fulfilling terms of the trust agreement. And the terms of the trust are God is divine, the divine vine, and we are the branches. And the branch cannot bear fruit unless it's rooted in the vine, in the vine. Otherwise, it has no life. It's weak. It's lifeless because it's cut off from the vine. I am the vine, and he are the branches. By their fruit, you will know them, and they will know themselves. Bring forth much fruit with patience and careful cultivation. So, through your willingness to practice, and we do have 365 lessons, you are planting your seed. Thoughts. Planting your seed so you can harvest your crop. It must be seed will grow up to be a mustard plant. We have to understand that this is a new era, it's a new world, a new millennium, and we have gone totally contrary to what has been given, given to us. So we have to identify with what is real, the image in which I was created. Love creates, the ego makes. God did not say, I made the ocean. I am the ocean. God did not say, I made love. I am love. Throughout challenges and, and, and difficulties, 
we may think at times, and I and I totally understand because I've I've I've, I've been there. You may think that you are in some sort of a, a, an impossible situation, only because you think it's possible to be in one. Expose it to the light. Situations change, circumstances change, events change. But the essence of what you are is unchangeable, unchanging, changeless, forever and forever. You are all knowing, all power, wisdom, all intelligence. So any attempt to tell God what you want implies distrust. God does not need our advice, nor does he, she, father, mother, creator need a suggestion. And God is everywhere and in everything. Just wake up and remember and accept your abundance, which is measured by your feeling of self-approval and confidence of what you are. So forgive yourself your madness and recognize the shining being of light that is your true self. Everything, everything has been given to us eternally. But we must make a concerted effort to put spiritual laws into application and not violate the law. When you violate the law, you need not be surprised at anything that happens because you're violating the terms of the trust agreement. And stop the deceitful pattern of delay, which is the greatest impediment to successful living. Be with you. Ask yourself, what do I want and what will I do? And it is the responsibility of each of us to recognize and accept the situation that is surrounding you and not try to fix the problem. Everyone's problem is the same problem. You suffer in distress, and all distress is unforgiveness. Give it up. Let it go. And again, it's the responsibility of each of us to recognize and accept the situation that is surrounding you and make a decision that it's time for change. And how is this change to take place? Well, right now. Right now. Now is all there is. How do the wise awaken? They see deception as deception. Do not be afraid at what spiritual sight will show you. Use your mind and the tools of your soul and choose to live your life with the awareness of what you are. The indivisible entity that has a real existence. Do you want to be free? The answer is yes. Then do not hold yourself hostage. Remember. And to remember is to restore to your memory what is already there. Remember what is taking place is a profound transformation. Transformation. Transforming consciousness. And transformation of consciousness is the only thing worth doing. So you are transforming consciousness from separation to wholeness, from being limited to being unlimited, from lack and scarcity to abundance and prosperity. And it's a, it's a personal transformation through the 
awakening of inner wisdom and understanding. Standing under the canopy of love, light, and wisdom. And life is not asking you to do the impossible. The undoing is not your task. All we're being asked to do is to let the light in and to stop your interference. Do not interfere. Relinquish everything that clutters up the mind and makes it deaf to reason, sanity, and the simple truth. And the more you realize, the lighter you become. Because you, 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 you're purging. From, you're going through a cleansing, a purging from your system. You become lighter. The more light you release. The more you release, the lighter you become. You're claiming your forgotten power. Simply allow. We, 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 many of us, um, we've been out of balance. And now you create in balance. So a rebalancing is taking place within you. you. You're releasing attachment to the old paradigm. Again, trust and know that where you're going is better than where you've been. Remain detached. Detachment is not weakness. It's inner strength. Your security comes from within. To be and know your true self means you are inwardly secure in your love. Inwardly. I will live with you. I will teach with you if okay. you will think with me. And it is natural to do mighty work because the Father within is I and my Father are one. So live, live in the feeling of being love, and you will be love, and you will do all things, not some things, all things through a consciousness of love. And again, you cannot have the fulfillment of your desires without acceptance. You cannot accept the gift on the outside until you first accept the gift on the inside. And you are the gift of love, light, and wisdom. You are love eternally. And love can only be awakened by love. And you cannot wake yourself because you're too confused about yourself. The activation is within the heart of love. So be willing to let go of, of beliefs that keep you, they keep you trapped. Release meaningless activities. You're tired and fatigued. Look within and refuse, absolutely refuse to be sidetracked into detours. Let vision show you where to go. And what the world needs is people who have woken up. Because you then have something to give that's not of time, but born of eternity. And we do not learn by words. We learn by an awakening up from within. And the source, Father, Mother, Creator, source that gave you life, does not seek to throw us to panic. The awakening is gradual. You do have a mighty purpose to fulfill, a sacred purpose that you came in to fulfill. Do you know that you cannot have, uh, you cannot have an argument with someone who is awake, aware? and alive. And what frightens us more than anything else is our own awakening. Most of what we think, and we're not even thinking, most of what we think is repetitive and useless. Put the intellect to sleep with 
for local anesthetics and tell the senses to go climb a tree. They're always clamoring for something. Get out. Get out of the doing and move into being. Spiritual living is simple living. And simple means easily understood and clear. We have to we have to understand that the system cannot make it, but you can. So forget about your problem and think about your life. Everyone's problem is the same problem, disguised in many different forms. Our separation from our true essence. And we are attempting to digest spiritual food with our educated mentality, with our historical, intellectual time concept, it will not work. As our spiritual understanding increases, or you're, you're, you're bringing in, or light is coming in, or light appears, dispelling the darkness. You are removing this is why we have to be gentle and compassionate with ourselves. You are removing layer upon layer of selfish con con conditioning. Thoughts deposited, habits, obstacles, over and over, every day of our lives. You are removing all that you have permitted to intervene and hold up your progress through your own neglect. All the limitation, selfish conditioning, lack, limitation, sacrifice, suffering, pain, neglect, unworthiness, you are worthy to receive what is rightfully. Of course, in Miracles teaches us in the text, Lesson 128 and uh, um, that's 128, 129, 130. The world I see holds nothing that I want. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. And it is impossible to see two worlds. Which world do you desire to be in? Choices. So the emphasis on the course is to wake up. Change your mind about yourself. The mind can think it sleeps, but that is all. And what seems opposite of life is sleeping. And a sleeping mind must awaken. So no matter no matter what your test may be, may you be gentle and compassionate with yourself. May you bear joyously by feeling, feeling the presence of love within you. Be, you, you want to be, be uh, host. You want to be host to God and not hostage to the ego. So we have to get up, wake up, from the slumber of ignorance. We carry, we carry an enormous amount of, well, many of us carry, we all carry baggage. Some of us just carry more baggage than others. So we carry an enormous amount of excess baggage weighing us down. Likes, dislikes, opinion, habits, resentment, hostility, grievances. But just as it is we who have acquired it, we can also gradually let it let it go. We can gradually, through your practice, through your devotion, keep tossing it overboard. And so all the challenges we have are opportunities for growth. 
all the challenges, a test to be or fully aware to accept what you are, to end the past, to have us, uh, and you do have a choice. You do have a choice to accept a higher vibration of energy or be in denial of what you are. And to deny is to not know. And you do know. We all know. The knowledge is already there. Hi, hi. I have a little word for the the top of the hour. Do you want to close it out in the next minute? Okay. I will, yeah. So you want to combine spiritual ideals with modern educational efforts. Be willing, be open, trust. And do not fall back into the sleep. Be awake, aware, and alive. The life. Right here, right now. Thank you, Dove. Thank you all.